a couple of things that I've wondered about. So one is, it just feels like, and this is the reaction I've got for my little parlor game, but the, uh, uh, or it's informed by that, that it just doesn't seem that cool to say I'm a Joe Biden Democrat. It's just not that cool. And I wonder kind of, and, and that's including all the things you said, right? I think it's also a little bit because uh, Joe Biden said something where I thought he was wrong and I think he was right, right? It, and where he was saying, he was talking about bipartisanship in when he was running for president and very smart people, including people who we talked to on this program, including me, like being hopeful, but also skeptical, said, yeah, the political world is different, Joe. It's different than it was when you enter the Senate as a young man. There are no longer uh, like like conservative Democrats in the South representing Southern districts as there were when you started. There are no longer liberal Republicans representing the North in Congress when you started. It, it, we now have uh, a more divided, a more willing to engage a minority rule political team. Uh, you had a Senate leader who said his most important objective was not to particular, not to pass a particular set of bills, but to topple the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, right? That's a different political landscape. And so, you know, this kumbaya, let's get, get along is foolishness. And yet he was right. And, and yet there still were, because even U.S. senators, have to be elected statewide. Even they want to be able to say to their, uh, and not just if you're in West Virginia, even they want to be able to say this is a bipartisan solution or this is reasonable. Joe Biden not just having the knives out, having a different style, saying, hey, let's work together, did actually matter. I, I realized when I served a couple terms in a legislative body that the that the job of being a campaigner and an activist was very much about elevating the energy in the room so that people would act. That the work of lawmaking very often is to lower the energy in the room. The easiest bill to pass is one that's called uh, technical fix. Oh, it's a technical fix. Right? <laughs> technical fix. We're going to reinstitute antitrust enforcement in the United States. It's a te technical fix. Everything's a technical fix. It can have big uh, ramifications. And that Joe Biden's style has been to lower the energy in the room that has been effective and useful. And maybe Gavin Newsom helps, maybe Pete Buttigieg helps, maybe the, the, the MSNBC doesn't help all that much. Uh, maybe there are other folks who can then have to be the trumpeter to say, hey, see that more quiet style? It's actually useful. Somebody else has to thump the drum because he's not spending all the time thumping the drum unless he's talking about democracy and the uh, fundamental threats to democracy where he's willing to thump the drum. And so all the people who are like, no, no, the definition of inspiration in the Democratic Party should be Bernie Sanders. The more you depart from that, the less inspiring you are or should then then well, he's not like that. So it's not cool for us to say among our liberal friends that we think he's a good president. So that's the other piece of the dynamic to take nothing away from uh, from gas prices. But that's the other piece of the dynamic that I've been curious about. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, do you remember um, in 2020, uh, Senator Michael Bennett's uh, pitch for why he should be president was, um, I will be boring. You will go two or three weeks without even thinking about me or, or hearing of me, which uh, was taking it even further than you're saying and and, and was a sort of uh, understandable response to the Trump years uh, because, you know, uh, Trump was chaos and celebrity and in our faces all the time and tweeting at weekends and and it was bedlam and um and biden therefore you know i think was an antidote to that in in many ways and certainly i can tell you weekends in washington feel a bit quieter and, and not just because of the the lack of tweets uh he did take the temperature down which is exactly what was needed um and uh, yeah counterintuitively i've certainly seen the argument that uh, during the last two or three years uh congress actually got uh, it was fairly productive. It actually got a fair amount done. Um, and most of it, again, sort of slightly echoing what you're talking about, uh, legislation that doesn't get written about in news headlines and most people don't notice, but it was just kind of, kind of quietly done by Democrats and Republicans. And then, you know, slightly more famously, you know, bipartisan gun legislation and some other things. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I, as I said, you know, it's this paradox where... Um, the Republican Party, in some ways, is more extreme than ever, and and Biden has to denounce the MAGA attacks on democracy, while, you know, with his other hand picking up the phone to Mitch McConnell and saying, you know, can we get this done and can we push this through? And 
and and certainly I think you 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 see some distinction between the the House and the Senate. Um, you know, the House feels more chaotic these days and more of a a, a hotbed of uh, MAGA extremism. And you know, I went to Marjorie Taylor Greene's home district, for example, where they all love her. And I I think it's a function, obviously, of the the primary system where the loudest voices are rewarded, and um, you know, there are lots of MAGA people in, in very safe seats. Whereas, as you say, in the in the Senate, you still have to appeal statewide, and um, and therefore a little degree of moderation is required. And and so, you know, I, I would feel safer about uh, funding Ukraine's war against Russia if if it was solely in the hands of the Senate. Um, whereas uh, the House uh, looking a bit uh, shaky. Uh, that said, you know, I mean, the Senate has its moments of madness. I mean, this is a chamber that contains, you know, Ted Cruz of Texas, and uh, and uh, and uh, I think you know J D Vance is uh, an interesting character. The way he's trying to copy some of these Trump ideas of, you know, we should become the party of the the working class, and you know, it's only people who use their hands who really matter, and 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 so on. Um, and obviously, Josh Hawley is there as well. So. Uh, um, yeah, it's not a complete sort of paragon of, uh, sort of John McCain era Republicanism by any means.